Hello, Cam here and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the Tensorate series by Neon Yang. If you follow me on Twitter, it's no secret that I absolutely adore this series. It comprises of four novellas and um, recently Tor Books released a new cover for the Omnibus and it's right here. It is absolutely so so beautiful. I, I, I have no words. It is um, the cover artist is Yuko Sh Yuko Shimizu, Shimizu. Yeah, the cover artist is Yuko Shimizu, and looking at this um, cover for the omnibus, I really think it encompasses the themes and the entire storyline that the four novellas cover. So I'm going to go through each novella. I'm going to talk about my experience with them. And towards the end, I'm going to give a sort of over overview of the entire series. Um, I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible and keep it non-spoiler because I really want more people to pick up this uh, series. It's not, it's not a new series exactly. It's backlist. Um, but I highly recommend picking it up, especially if you are interested in trying. Um, I wouldn't say that it's for beginner fantasy readers, but perhaps maybe beginner uh, sci-fi readers might um, like this series because it's a mix of sci-fi and fantasy, and it highly draws from East Asian culture. So perhaps if you want to explore more East Asian culture inspired books or get into heavier sci-fi books um definitely start with this so this tensor series um is set in a world where certain people can access have access to a magic system called the slack and the slack is similar to an elemental type of magic however i found compared to other magic systems i believe that the slack is not something that you can easily control and it's not easily bound to your emotions rather it's more intentional it's a more purpose purposeful type of magic system uh, at least that's what i understand from the book it the way that the author describes this magic system reminds me quite a bit of the wheel of time in the sense that in the wheel of time people um people talk about how um, they channel, you know, Saidin or Saidar, and it's they imagine it in a sort of way of weaving where you weave different sources like fire, spirit, um, air. And in this, in the Tensor series, you are more, it's not weaving, it's more like you're building the slack, you are moving things according to your will and i hope that's that makes a bit of sense from what i'm trying to um explain it's really really interesting and i absolutely enjoyed how the author explained um the nuances of this magic system and in this world it's the people who have access to this magic system that are the ruling class and um they they are the ruling class and they use this magic to oppress the people who do not have access to it because of this the world is the tensor series is a world that is oppressed by a monarchy uh, at the head is the protector and there are people who are starting a revolution against this oppressive monarchy and they are known as the machinists and You'd guess correctly that machinists are people who, you know, engineering and so it has a sort of steampunkish, silk punk, I guess they call it, uh, a steampunk vibe and it's a machinist versus slack craft users kind of world. The first book in the Tensorate series is The Black Tides of Heaven. It follows twins Akeha and Makoya. They were born they're the children of the protectorate protector protectorate 
like they're the children of the protector but they are eventually shipped off to the monastery because they are part of a deal that the protector makes with the head abbot Akeha's perspective their twins life seems to be going very smooth and in the tensor world children are don't have a gender uh, gender is something that they can make a choice of they choose once they reach a certain age and Mokoya decides that she wants to be female and this begins a sort of um, disconnection between Akeha and their twin because Akeha hasn't decided what gender they want to be and Akeha still has this feeling of being uncomfortable, unsure of what their future hold while they see that their twin has already set a path for herself and Akeha feels left out because this is someone that they came into the monastery with, spent their whole life with and suddenly Mokoya is making a decision which it's not selfish because this is Mokoya's life and she gets to decide who she wants to be, what she wants to be but Akeha begins to feel left out and the first no so the first novella follows Akeha's life after leaving the monastery, leaving their sister and trying to figure out where they fit in this world hello everyone editing cam over here i just wanted to clarify that akeha eventually identifies as male and so from now onwards i'll be referring to akeha as he him i forgot to mention this mid-review and hence why i'm mentioning it now so i hope that clarifies any confusion that you might have so we follow Akeha's life as he tries to um, not only as he tries to discover himself but along the way he also realizes and sees witnesses firsthand how corrupt his mother's um, monarchy is and how it has oppressed so many people and because of this he joins the machinist in order to overthrow his mother the way the author writes emotions and Akeha's confusion with themselves is just, it's really, how do I say it? It was really touching. Like it's something that you definitely, when you read it, you feel like you go through that as well. And it's not just about who Akeha is. Akeha is in, in terms of their relationship to their sister to their mother but it's also who they are on their own and what they want from this life and and that was something that Akeha had to realize that they are their own person apart from Okoya apart from the, the the mother and apart from everything else and that even if they are part of the machinist they are still someone on their own you know on their own and i really really love that and after i read book one i immediately dove into book two which is the red treads of fortune the black tides of heaven follows akeha's journey the red treads of fortune follows mokoya who is a prophet married to the head abbot but she ends up going through a traumatic event that reshapes the next stages of her life and Mokoya's confusion and hurt at what happened to her is something that is vividly expressed in the book in the novella and I it made me sad to read it made me really empathize with this character who you know she believed that everything in her life was working out everything in her life is just going really well and then something happens and it's just thrown out of balance and for mccoy having the prophetic visions and not being able to see or stop what happened is so much more painful to bear and so she begins cutting off everyone from her life and just trying to seek out a way or a possibility of undoing what happened and she really 
is stubborn and really really trying to hold on to a past however this holding on you know is it's something that hurts her more than it heals her and her journey to this book is about letting go and accepting what happened acknowledging it and not necessarily moving on but knowing that your life it will always be a part of your life but it will also reshape and that there is even after trauma there is still hope there is still a chance to live life in a good way you know and her story was it was really heartbreaking but it was also one of hope and i think that also is something that relates to the overall theme of the machinist movement and so book three caught me by surprise um it's called the, the descent of monsters and it's written in a journal entry sort of style i it was hard for me to connect to this particular novella because after reading something that felt very intimate uh, we're moved into a more observational kind of storytelling and i did enjoy it i did enjoy that it covered more about the corruption that was happening under the protector's rule and it also gave us an outsider's glimpse of the machinist's machinist revolution um and i really enjoyed it i wouldn't say that it was as emotional as the first two books uh, sorry the first two novellas but it certainly was exciting i guess exciting is not a good way to put it considering we're like uncovering corruption but it it was and you see how see how the protectors rule really goes deeper than what you see on the surface it goes deeper than their the fight between the monarchy and the machinists and it also i don't want to say much because i don't want to spoil it um but it definitely has something to do with experimentations and the whole um oh my god i really don't want to spoil it but okay look this is stressing me out review mm, without spoiling it's really stressing me out so it encompasses the how deep the corruption in the protector's court is going and how absolutely obsessed with power the protector is so that is book three book four novella four is again a deviation from how um, the first three books were going novella 4 gives a far more personal look at the protector and how she rose to power and what she had to deal with and i don't love the protector and what she had done however you can there is something to admire about her and how she came to take all of this power for herself how she became the protector from just a young girl and honestly even as a young girl she wasn't exactly innocent because she was moving pieces around her to fit what she believed was right she comes to a point where she realizes that she has to take steps that secures her position as the protector and there is a certain satisfaction at watching or reading how she did it and i really had a smidge of admiration for this young girl and it was you know when you see a who she was from lady han's perspective you realize that this woman with all the power she had she was just someone isolated and lonely and perhaps she was also someone that was just used not perhaps she was someone who was used and to 
ensure that that would never happen again, she decided to become the protector. And even, you know, like, you see what happened in Novella Tree, it really connects to this and it really shows more of how obsessed and how badly skewed the protector's idea or views of society should be and i wish i could <laughs> i think book four was novella four was definitely my favorite one of all the entire thing the second one would probably be the red treads of fortune um third would be black the black tides of heaven and fourth would be descent of monsters um yeah i highly recommend picking up this book and I definitely think anyone can just bash it out in a day or maybe two um, but if you do have the chance to pick it up support the author and I'm really hoping to see more fantasy worlds like this with non-binary um, main characters and see more mix of sci-fi and fantasy and more unique magic systems you know if you enjoy quick reads short novels um emotional books books that are not told in um a standard narrative definitely i would highly recommend trying this series out and if you do pick it up i you should let me know what you think about it if you enjoyed the recommendation or if it's just not for you um, don't forget to subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and my blog as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have an amazing day.